Welcome to this video on encryption, your ultimate tool for safeguarding data privacy and security. Whether you're managing personal data or sensitive business information, encryption ensures your data stays safe from prying eyes. Let's dive in. So what exactly is encryption? Think of it as a way to lock your data with a unique key. It transforms readable data, plain text, into an unreadable format called ciphertext. Only authorized users with the right key can unlock it. This process is essential for protecting data at rest, in transit, and even while in use. But where should we focus our encryption efforts? Let's find out. Encryption works in three key areas, in transit, at rest, and in use. First, we have data in transit. This is data being transferred like files sent over the internet. Encrypting it protects against interception. Next is data at rest. This refers to stored data, such as files on a server or device. And finally, there's data in use. This is data actively being processed. Each of these areas requires specific tools and methods. Speaking of tools, let's explore one that simplifies the process. The AWS Encryption SDK is a game-changer for client-side encryption. It's a free, open-source library designed to help you encrypt and decrypt data following industry best practices. Whether you're securing sensitive files or implementing advanced encryption workflows, this SDK has you covered. Now, let's talk specifics, starting with encryption in transit. Encryption in transit ensures your data is protected during transfer. This is where SSL-TLS comes in. It uses public-slash-private key encryption to secure data. Think about logging into a website securely. SSL prevents eavesdropping and man-in-the-middle attacks. Let's understand how encryption in transit works using SSL using this diagram. In this diagram, we're exploring how encryption in transit works using SSL, or Secure Sockets Layer, to protect your data during transfer. Let's break it down step by step. On the left, we have a user interacting with a website. The user sends sensitive information, like a username and password, admin and admin secret in this example. However, to ensure that no one can intercept or read this information during its journey to the server, SSL encryption is applied. SSL converts the plain text credentials into a scrambled, unreadable format called ciphertext. You can see this represented by the orange box with a seemingly random string of characters, starting with 2F1030. This ciphertext is then transmitted securely over the internet to the destination, in this case, an HTTPS website. When the encrypted data reaches the website, the server performs SSL decryption. This process uses a private key to unlock the ciphertext and convert it back into its original, readable form admin, and admin secret. This two-step process of encryption and decryption ensures that even if someone intercepts the data in transit, they won't be able to make sense of it without the decryption key. SSL also protects the data's integrity, ensuring it hasn't been tampered with during transmission. This is why you see the HTTPS prefix and the padlock icon in your browser. It's a sign that SSL is actively securing your connection. Now that we understand encryption in transit, let's move forward and see how encryption protects data at rest and in use. Stored data, whether in databases, S3 buckets, or EBS volumes, needs protection too. AWS makes this simple with services like Key Management Service, KMS, or your own customer-managed keys. For example, data stored in Amazon S3 can be encrypted with just a few clicks. But who does the encryption and when? That brings us to server-side versus client-side encryption. Server-side encryption takes the load off your shoulders. Data is automatically encrypted when it reaches the server and decrypted only when accessed by authorized users. A perfect example is Amazon S3's server-side encryption. But if you prefer to have full control, client-side encryption might be your go-to. Let's understand server-side encryption using this diagram. In this diagram, we're diving into server-side encryption, a key method used by services like Amazon S3 to secure your data at rest. Let's break it down. On the left, we start with an object, a file, image, or any piece of data 
that you want to store securely. When this object is uploaded to a server, it travels over an HTTPS connection for added security and transit. But once it arrives at the server, the focus shifts to encryption at rest. Here's how it works. The server combines the data object with a special encryption key, often referred to as the data key. This encryption process converts your original object into a secure, unreadable format. You'll notice the lock symbol in the diagram. This represents the encrypted version of your data, which is then safely stored. Later, when you or an authorized user need to access the object, the server uses the same data key to decrypt it, transforming it back into its original, usable form. Finally, the object is transmitted back to you over HTTPS, ensuring security at every stage. This automated process removes the burden of managing encryption keys or performing encryption on your end. It's seamless, efficient, and ensures your data remains protected, even if someone gains unauthorized access to the storage location. Server-side encryption is an excellent choice for securing sensitive data, whether it's financial records, personal files, or confidential business information. Next, let's look at how client-side encryption compares to this approach. Client-side encryption puts you in the driver's seat. Here, data is encrypted locally before it's even sent to AWS. This ensures privacy throughout its life cycle, whether in transit or at rest. It's ideal for highly sensitive information that needs an extra layer of security. Let's understand client encryption using this diagram. In this diagram, we're focusing on client-side encryption, a method that gives you full control over your data's security. Let's walk through how it works. On the left, we start with the data object, which could be anything like a file or a document. Before this object is sent to a storage service, such as Amazon S3, it is encrypted locally on the client side. Here's where the client-side data key comes into play. This key, managed entirely by you, is combined with the object to perform encryption. The result is a secure, locked version of the object, represented by the lock icon. The encrypted object is then sent to the storage service via HTTPS for additional security during transmission. Once stored, the object remains in its encrypted form. This ensures that even if someone accesses the storage system, they cannot decrypt or read the data without your key. Now, when it's time to retrieve the object, the process reverses. The encrypted object is downloaded back to your system, where the client-side data key is used to decrypt it. This unlocks the original object, making it usable again. This approach ensures complete end-to-end -end data security, as the encryption and decryption happen entirely on your side. It's particularly useful for scenarios where you want to ensure that sensitive data remains private, even from the storage provider. Client-side encryption is a powerful tool for protecting critical information and ensuring compliance with stringent security requirements. With this covered, let's move on to see how encryption in use works. Encrypting data while it's in use might sound tricky, but AWS makes it possible with solutions like Nitro Enclaves. This technology isolates sensitive data during processing, ensuring it remains secure even while computations are running. It's perfect for applications like confidential analytics or secure transaction processing. To wrap up, encryption is a must-have for protecting data, whether it's at rest, in transit, or in use. AWS offers powerful tools like KMS and the encryption SDK to make this process seamless. By following encryption best practices, you can ensure your data stays private, secure, and compliant with industry standards.